So a node is a very basic fundamental data structure that's used in a lot of other types of data structures. Basically anything that has a structure of having multiple elements that it keeps track of will typically implement a node in order to facilitate that sort of um, structure. So given that we're going to talk about a lot of different structures like that, things like stacks and queues and lists, we're going to want to have a good understanding of what a node is and understand how to implement it in Python. So if you want to think about a node, uh, the general way that I typically think about it is using an example of a list. So you know in Python that you have a list and inside of lists you have like elements. You have like three, um, I don't know, this one might have like five and then there's a whole bunch more elements maybe and then you have like the last element inside of the list. The idea is that at every location in the list you have a value, right? And there's always a value that's going to follow it until you get to the end of the list. So when we deal with these sort of structures, we typically utilize what's referred to as a node in order to track it, right? So what a node is, is it's a fundamental data structure that holds two pieces of information. It holds the value of the current node, and it also holds a pointer to the next thing that follows it whether that be like the next value in a list or the next value in a queue or whatever that may be, right? So if you really look at the way that most programming languages implement lists, including Python, what they really typically do is they'll keep track of the first thing in the list. So that way they have the value of the first thing as well as what follows it. When we iterate through the list, we can just simply follow those next links until we reach the end of the list or until we reach where we want to reach, right? So that's the general idea of how most data structures end up being implemented. And that sort of functionality can be implemented utilizing these nodes, which simply just track the value as well as the thing that follows next to it. So understanding that, let's take a look at how we can implement it in Python. So I'm going to start by creating a new Python file. I'm going to call it node. So inside of this node file, we're going to create a class called node. And I'm going to create an initialization function, just like we've been doing with our other objects. And this is going to take in a value as well as the thing that follows it next, right? So that's the general sort of idea of what we're going to do. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set up the property. So the first property is value, which will be equal to the value that's provided. The next property will be equal to next, which is equal to the next value that's provided. Now, I just want to note that this constructor can be varied. You don't necessarily have to put in the value in next. Um, we could have a constructor with no arguments, a constructor with one argument. It really depends on what you're implementing and how you want to implement things and what makes most sense to you. I typically go with the two argument constructor, but if you've seen something different, just know that all of them are valid. They just have a little bit of a different implementation um, when you utilize the different structures. So this is the idea of the properties that we have. And then of course, we just want to set up like um, getters and setters for each of those properties, right? So we can um, say something like we can do um, get value, right? And get value will simply just return the value. Um, we can do get next, right? And get next will return um, the next value. Sorry, I should have put self in front of this, of course, because it's a property. And then we can put in our setters as well. And our setters will simply just set the value and set the next, right? So this one will take in the value and it will say self.value equals value. Uh, the next one will take in, we'll say set next, right? And this one will essentially just set the next for itself, right? Self.next equals next. And that's actually all we really need to do to implement a node. So it's very simple and straightforward. You can see that it's literally just two properties and those two properties have corresponding getters and setters associated with them. So it's really not that big of a deal um, to implement a node like this. So now that you have the node implemented, let's just take a look at how it works inside of a main just to get a little bit of a feel for it. Um, and you're gonna see this node object used over and over again in a lot of different applications. So. Um, I'll just demonstrate a few examples of what we might be able to do with it. So what we can do is, so inside of my main, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say from node import node, right? We'll just import the node object. And what I'll do is I'll create my first node. So I'll say first equals node. And I need to give it again a value and something to point to. So the value in this case is going to be, let's say three. 
and then something that we want to point to. So in this case, I don't have any other nodes that I can really point it to. So I'm gonna point it to nothing for now. So I'll just say none to say that it points to nothing, right? So then I can create a second node. So I can say second equals node. And this one might have a value like four. And this one I can make it point to first, right? So what we've done right now is like our general structure is looking like this. Let me bring back up the, uh, the whiteboard here. Our general structure looks like this. I declared my first node, which was three. And this one points to nothing. So none is just sort of like a null pointer. It just sort of says like, uh, it doesn't point to anything. This is just sort of the end of the list, right? So that's the way that that works. And then the second node is pointing to three and it has a value of four. So you can see we sort of created this structure where we have the second node, right? This one was second. This one was first. And you can see that we created a structure of like four is pointing to three, right? And then three is pointing to nothing. So three is sort of like the end of the list. We don't even really have to say this. We could just say there's nothing there. It doesn't point to anything. It's just, it's the end, right? So you can see that if you were to call like get next, you would get this value here, right? And if you were calling get value, you would get this value here. So let's take a look at that in general in our um, actual code. So if I print, um, let's say second dot get value, right? Then I'm just gonna get the value back, which is four, right? But if I say second dot get next, what you'll see is it will return back something sort of weird. You see, it says like node, node dot object. So it doesn't understand how to print our node object. And we can actually add some methods to allow it to print that object properly. And uh, maybe we'll discuss that in a little bit, but um, this would be the general idea. So we could say node dot get next is actually getting the next node, which is first. So if I add a dot get value to the end of this, what you'll see is that it will return us back the actual value, which is three. So you can see that it links to that node that has the three inside of it. So that gives you the general way of how that linking actually works, right? So if I want to show you um, how to actually get this to display um, text when we say dot get next, right? So when we do this, it just shows this node thing because it doesn't actually understand how to print out that node. So we can actually tell Python how to print it. And the way that we do that is by defining this function here, which is underscore underscore str. What this does is it makes it so that when you type in the str function, like how you converted like an integer to a string, for instance, it will convert our node into text. And what we do is we tell it what text we want to display. So I can say something like return self.value, for instance. If we do this and then we run this, um, in this case, we get, oh, it returned a non-string, sorry. So we want to like explicitly convert this to a string as well. So we want to put str around it. The reason why that gave me an error was because um, value is an integer, right? So it attempted to um, return an integer when it was expecting to return a string. So to fix that, we just uh, wrap it in the str function, which converts the integer into a string. So now when we do this, you'll see we actually get the value back instead. So that's the general idea of being able to get it to print out something. If you override this str function, whenever you print the object, it will print whatever you return from that function, right? So this is a really nice thing to know about because it allows us to just say like print and then the object. And rather than showing that weird object thing, we can just show like actual data that is corresponding to our, um, to our object itself. So this would be a general simple example of implementing a node inside of Python. And understanding this, you'll be able to implement any other data structure because they're all gonna build on top of the nodes. So um, what we'll see next in when we take a look at future videos, we'll take a look at things like stacks and queues and those are all gonna build off of this node object. So understanding this, you should be able to apply it and um, be able to build more complex data structures with it.